In this tutorial, I'll show you how to create some custom transitions using RED5 and EDS6. Okay, here I am in EDS6 and I'm going to show you how to use RED5 as a transition uh, in the EDS timeline. So, let's start. I got some Art Beats footage and some footage of people fighting in Salem, Massachusetts here. Looks like an exciting short film. So I'm going to apply red as a transition in between each of these edit points and we'll set them up individually. Okay, so let's look at the first one here. I'm going to open up the setup dialog in EDIUS to launch red. You can see I've got my in incoming clip and outgoing clips here from the EDIUS timeline. So let's begin. Uh, if you're new to red, red automatically keyframes your changes. So if I change the opacity on video one, it automatically creates a keyframe here at the end. So now when I scrub through the timeline, you can see that I have basically created a cross dissolve. All right, nice. And we're going to use that same principle to create custom transitions using effects. Uh, let's apply a BCC glow effect, for example. Okay, so default setting, um, static effect. But if I change, you know, this value at the beginning of the timeline, and again at the end. Okay, so now I've created keyframes for my start and end of the effect. And in the middle, just going to boost the intensity there. And now I've created a glow uh, transition, if you will, uh, that matches the timing of the cross dissolve. Okay, now let's say you want to really customize these keyframes. Well, red automatically defaults to an ease in, ease out interpolation. You have all these different choices and Beyond that, you can set them up manually. I'm going to toggle smart, mo smart View Mode here, select the Glow Intensity, and then select Graph View. Okay, you can see that the uh, Glow Intensity parameter is here as a graph, and I can change the handles on this keyframe interpolation. So I can fully customize the uh, keyframe behavior using Graph Mode. Okay, it's so going to go back into regular view mode here, collapse that, and let's also put a desaturation effect on there. It's going to bring it down a little bit. Now, in this case, because I'm only changing the middle, the start and end are going to maintain the default values, so it's really like I'm just changing the saturation on the glow. Okay, one last detail, I'm going to add a lens flare. It's in the OpenGL category, Lens Flare Advanced. So I want this Lens Flare to end up on the Lighthouse. I think that would make sense. And of course, it's going to end with no scale, no intensity. Middle of the effect. Um, well, first of all, let's set the start point, say center of the frame. Let's hide the effect there. And now middle here, we can boost the scale and intensity. Really want that to be noticeable. There we go. Okay, so as I scrub through, I can get an idea how my transition looks. Looks pretty good. I think maybe the lens flare starts too early. So what I can do, because the effect is its own track in the timeline, I can just drag the start of the effect to later there. So the timing uh, self-adjusts on that keyframe and now it looks more natural to me. I can do that for all of these if I want. Maybe I want that to just happen around here and end, you know, likewise earlier. So you can treat each of these effects as its own separate um, almost media like track in the timeline. Okay, so that's uh, that's the first part of creating a custom transition in red. Let's apply that and move on to the next one. So this time, we're actually going to use a transition effect. So I've got video one selected. 
going to go to filters, wipe transitions, and select swish pan. Okay, so you notice that swish pan is nested in video one, and if I twirl down swish pan, I have this layer to reveal option. I'm going to click here and select video two. So now it's automatically pulling the incoming video from the EDS timeline. So I'm going to collapse that, go into the, sorry, not collapse that, uh, collapse that and go into the swish pan controls, change animation to auto, and without having to create keyframes, I have an auto animating transition there. So that's a really big time saver um, for doing any kind of transition effect. Now let's say you've got the auto animation up there, but you still want to make changes. Well, if you go into animation tuning, select view east curve, you can see the motion of the swish pan represented as a line here. And if you increase or decrease the ease in and ease out values, you can smooth out that motion. So I'm going to make some changes, create kind of an S-shaped curve here, and I want all of these keyframes, if you will, to be constant. That, that basically means not a keyframe. <laughs> so now, if I scrub the timeline, okay, different, very different style of motion, more what I was going for. Okay, now let's deselect everything and apply a light effect. How about raise puffy? One of my favorite light rays effects, I would say. And let's start this on the right edge of the screen and have it end on the left. And what I really want is I want this rays effect to follow the edge of the swish pan. So the swish pan actually reaches the edge about here. So we're gonna pull this way over about here. I, I like that little beam effect that it has there. So I want to catch that. There it is. Very nice. And like the globe before, I'm going to make sure that the intensity and ray length animate with the transition. Always good to double check, make sure you are selecting the keyframe you think you're selecting. Okay, that's perhaps a little bit of a blowout there, but we're going to change the color so it might look different. Um, actually, let's change the color right now. It's set up to be this kind of default color. If I change the colorized preset here, these are all preloaded, um, I get a nice blue effect, so looks a little bit more natural on this background. I'm also going to bring down the saturation on this one too. And just going to make that constant. And in spite of all that, it's still a little bit too bright there. So I'm going to bring down the intensity again. That's good. Okay, perfect. So two transitions for two. Back in EDIUS, you can see it. Um, not quite real time, but still really quick update. Very nice. All right, next, another of the red transitions, the BCC lens transition. This is another really cool one. This is designed to give your transition a lens blur effect in between the two clips. Uh, it's really cool. This time, I am going to keyframe something in the transition. I'm going to keyframe the scale of the iris so that in addition to kind of blurring in and out which I need to set this to auto just like before and I need to set this to v2 just like before okay so in addition to you know transitioning with the effect that additional keyframe really kind of pushes the uh, extremity of the look there all right and like I said it's a lens blur based effect you can see the shape of the iris there. You could also just say view iris to get a really accurate look of what's going on. So that's my default iris. I'm going to give mine five sides and I'm going to give it a little bit of rotation. Okay, and I'm going to give it some bokeh. All right, just a little bit. And I'm going to make that constant. 
So in addition to being able to change iris size and rotation and shape and all that stuff, you can also adjust the uh, highlights, the intensity, if you will, of the overall effect. So check this out. I'm going to boost that way up in the middle here. Okay, maybe not that much. Um, I am going to let that be keyframed. I'm going to so soften that a little bit. And if you want more color, then you can say RGB glow instead of RGB max. I'm going to keep max there. I'm just going to soften it more. Okay, so that kind of comes up and then goes away. Now, let's go back to the start here. And this is another one I want to add a lens flare to. So just like before, select my video. Let's see how it looks if I just select video one and add that lens flare. All right, so where do we want it to end up? Let's say on her sword. Where do we want it to start? Let's say on her earring. So kind of, you know, making sense where the glow is coming from each time. And at the end, I hate to get rid of it there, but that's not the point, right? <laughs> Artificial lens flare would look really cool there, but all right. And push it up a little bit ahead of schedule. Nice. So you can see it comes on just early enough to catch your attention and then goes away just after out of the blur, which is what I wanted. So we have two for two. Uh, no, three for three. Jeez, I'm losing count here. And uh, basically, we could keep going. We could combine all these different filters offered in red, um, create keyframes, or use the built-in transitions. And the possibilities are virtually endless here. And maybe you just don't have time to create a really in-depth transition. Well, you're in luck because Red actually includes a library browser just full of custom-made transitions and effects um, for you to, you know, basically load at the push of a button. So we have all these different categories. I'm going to look at transitions. Within transitions, we have all these different categories. Um, hundreds of presets in Red, maybe even thousands. Um, so let's go to designer transitions. That sounds cool. Uh, just kind of a cached image I have available here, but I can preview the effect with my media in this little window here. So here's one, um, Kaleida Lens Flare. That one I really like. Uh, you can try any of these. Again, this is just one sample of effects offered in red. That one's really cool, too. I'm going to stick with this one. I'm going to insert the effect. Okay, so I don't have to do anything else. It's like opening a project that was already made for me. And if you look at the timeline, you can see that it was made the way that we did our first transition here, by just adding filters on top of the video with keyframes. Um, so if you need to make changes to any of these, you can easily go back in, um, maybe, you know, use smart mode to figure out what was changed. I actually don't see any that many keyframed uh, elements in this filter, but you know, you get the idea. So even though it's a preset, it's fully customizable. Here's the graph again, so I could change that live, get a different effect, do whatever I want to it and apply it back. So you know, what could have taken me minutes to set up just took me seconds, right? And time is very important, obviously, when you are editing with deadlines. Okay, so there you have a very brief introduction to creating some custom transitions in red in EDS 6. Now, if you liked what you saw here and want to try it out for free, you can actually download a trial version of Red 5 at our website, and that's at borisfx.com.